take a full look at your network with Glasswire. For more information, check it out at the link below. Hey, what's up everybody? Sleeping Moddy here, back with another video. And today we're here with this month's installment, or just another installment, if it's not June anymore, which I don't think it is. But anyway, we are here with another installment of our Code It series. A little series of videos where we go ahead and do some programming in Java and make some interesting stuff. Now, this series is not about the theory. We're not going to talk about theory stuff behind it. We're just going to go ahead and start jumping into programming. You can find all the code actually just pasted straight in that description box, and that will be the same across all the other videos we do. So you can go ahead and find the series linked in the description box. You can find the code linked in that description box. But today we're gonna to be going ahead and making a little Java application that goes ahead and pulls all the clickable links from a web page. Now, why on earth would you wanna do that? Well, simply, if you're going ahead and doing some development of a web page, having a program that can quickly just get all the links and make sure they work is a really valuable tool. On top of this, if you just wanna find hidden links on a web page or just get all the links from a web page, this is also to another very valuable tool. Now you can also to write some additional classes and functions into this, not only to just get all the links, but also to, to click them, store them to a file and randomly select them and all those types of things. However, the more advanced features will have to wait for a future video. So today we're going to go ahead and write a simple program to find all the links on a web page and print them out onto our computer. So let's jump over and get into some programming. Okay, so before we actually jump into this program, what I'm going to do is just demo it for you guys so you can actually get an idea of what we're going to be building here today. So if we go ahead and just run this guy right here, what we can actually get when it finally loads through is a list of links on the web page. So we put in www.cpmodder.com, which is just one of my pages, and boom, what we've got here is a printout of all the different links on the web page. So we've got things like the YouTube channel link, we've got a Google+, Instagram, Twitter, and social statistics, all those types of things. Now, this is again really important and really helpful if you are actually a web developer you can basically run this find all the links on your web page and just manually click them like this to actually find out whether they all work now you can include another couple functions that actually take all these links and actually open up in a chrome tab but for the sake of keeping things simple today we're just going to make this process actually output and walk you guys through that so let's go ahead close off this stuff right here and make ourselves a new file. Now today we are using IntelliJ, this is the latest version, but if you have something like Eclipse or the freer version, the process is going to be exactly the same in terms of code, just the buttons you press may be ever so slightly different. So we're going to go over here on the left hand panel and go to new and we want to make ourselves a new package just because I like to keep things organized and in one class. So the new package for today is we're going to call this guy uh, web, uh, let's go web underscore clicker and we're going to run with web clicker. Now, in this particular guy, what we're going to first and foremost need to get ourselves off the internet is a package or rather a um, a Java library known as JSoup. Now, JSoup is, according to Wikipedia anyway, JSoup is an open source Java library designed to phrase, extract, and manipulate data stored in HTML documents, which is exactly what we're doing here. We're going to be getting ourselves, well, all the little bits of code as we saw just before and make it into which butts are which. So we're going to need to grab ourselves JSoup so you can find that link in the description box. I went ahead to the download section and just downloaded the core library because that's all we're going to need. And then if you are using IntelliJ, and I think a lot of IDEs actually do this, what we're going to do is find the package we just made, right click, and we're going to go ahead and show in Explorer, or if you're on a Mac, show in Finder. Basically what this does is opens up another window like this guy that goes ahead and well has all the different files in it. So we can see here, web click up. I can open that up and we're going to bring in our JSoup jar file. Now, this is what you download the core. Uh, mine is 1.1.1, 1.11.3, if I get those numbers right. Uh, this is just a little jar file, so we can move that off to the side. So once we've gone ahead and imported it, we can see that the JSoup jar file that we just put into our file explorer is now under web clicker. We can right click this guy and we can go as add as library. We can leave this as is, or if you want to rename it and do that kind of stuff, I recommend just leaving it as is so you know what it is. Boom, we can do that there. Now in IntelliJ, there's a couple different options to add this library, but seeing that I've already done it up here, we can uh, just hit cancel because otherwise I'll get double ups. But uh, for the sake of this, what you do, right click, add library, uh, add as library rather, and boom, JSoup will work. So what we need to do is go ahead, right click on our uh, little uh, package and go to a new Java class. We'll call this guy web underscore clicker dot Java and we'll run that. Boom, now we've got our page and we can start writing ourselves some code. 
Now, if you were a little bit lost in what we just did, we implemented this JSOUP thing and it like does web stuff. Essentially, what this does is gives us access to the internet on a very basic level. So yes, it is a lot more complex than just giving you access, but what the code we're gonna write here today, basically it just allows us to see the internet, interact with the internet and those types of things. Bit of a library with some different functions which we'll be calling uh, throughout this usage, which is why we need to import this package again. Without it, you can still write the code, it just won't run in the way that we want it to run. So JSOUP in what we're doing here, definitely very important. Now just like our last program, what we're gonna need to do before we actually get into writing our code in our public class right here is get ourselves some some import statements. So we can go import and we can import what we need is java.io, let's spell java right, j-a-v-a, not java, -E, dot uh, io is what we want and we want all of the io package and we also want import uh, java dot net which is what we're taking advantage of with our jsoup and dot net dot all and we can get that so those are the two import statements that we will need for this particular program our one that uh, responds to the internet and then one does some uh, file io now file io isn't exactly going to be used a whole ton other than managing our file uh, for the website but still definitely need it. Anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into our public class so we can see we've just moved down the brackets a little bit. And the first thing we wanna do, obviously add ourselves a main method because without a main method, we can't exactly run this program. So let's chuck that guy in there. So again, this is just a standard thing that we're going to use for a lot of our videos right here because we're not doing a whole bunch of different classes and stuff like that. It uh, just keeps them simple to keep ourselves the main class right that we can, What we can do here is just do some little formatting of these guys, move that brace down and boom, we're actually ready to go ahead and get started with our programming. So first thing we want is URL, which is needing to be keywords right there. So that is calling from our JSOUP, I believe. And then we can call this guy URL. So URL, URL, and we can go to input, input stream. Actually, we don't want stream reader yet. We want input stream just is, and we call this one is equals null. Once we've got that guy, we'll go with a buffer reader, buffer reader, boom. And we'll call this guy. Let's call this guy BR because buffer reader BR makes sense there. And we'll call another string. Actually, we'll call this guy right. So we've got string and we'll call this guy line. L-I-N-E. So basically, if you are following along with another IDE, basically what I start to do is type the word and then because IntelliJ has such a great suggestion method, I just hit tab and it fills out the rest of the word. So for example, uh, on input stream, we go input stream, we can see right there, boom, we can tab that out, does some input stream stuff, but that's not what we want for this video. So uh, if your program does support little autofill, please use it. It saves you a whole ton of time and is really, really useful. So that's what I did uh, for most of this line. I type like three letters and then it'll just tab right out. Really really helpful. Now that we've done that, we need to grab ourselves some try and catch blocks because we want to have some sort of uh, capability if there is an error. What should we do if there is an error? So we try something, if there's an error, we'll catch it and then we'll catch it and then finally and all those types of things. So try and catch, very, very important. So we'll hit ourselves with a try, T-R-Y, open up ourselves a brace. And we can see that IntelliJ auto threw in another brace here, really, really helpful for that. And we'll go URL, which is the thing that we just used up here. So we made URL, boom, URL. We'll eke ourselves a new URL and then in brackets, we'll put what URL. Now, for the sake of not getting IP blocked by a website or something like that, what I'm just gonna use is uh, my own website, so cpmodder.com. If you wanna go ahead and use that for your, web, uh, your website that you wanna go ahead and test out and do some playing around with, absolutely fine by me. Go ahead and do it any day. I'm more than happy for you guys guys do it. If you hit it a thousand times in one session, I'm not concerned at all. Um, you know, not a problem at all. So basically what I did, pasted in HTTPS, uh, www.cpmodder.com with two little quotes around the actual words. So without those quotes, uh, it doesn't work. It just thinks it's keywords. So it is definitely needed to have those uh, little quotes right there. Basically telling that URL now equals this URL. Pretty simple there. We'll go ahead and move down to the next line. Now we see that there is a bit of an error here but that's okay because we'll deal with it in just a moment. So on top of this, we need to fill out the rest of these stuff. So we've got is up there. So we go is uh, equals URL, URL. 
at dot open stream. So we need to open that up. Uh, basically this throws an IO exception. So you can add a little node throws an IO exception. If I spelled exception right, IO actually IO exception. Oops. There we go, I exception. So that's kind of an optional. You can do double slashes to add in some nodes. And one thing you'll notice is I forgot to put a little semicolon right there. And then finally we have buffer reader or BR, which is what we need to fill in as well. So again, we're just sort of filling up these uh, little guys right here. So BR, IS and URL is being filled in at the moment. Uh, we'll go URL dots, uh, what do we need? Actually, no, we need a new buffer, a new buffer reader. And we'll bring this guy in, so new input stream reader, which is perfectly fine, is. And then we can close this guy off like so. So basically what's happening in this line is we're taking our is, which is what we defined here, which is basically URL gets defined is and then gets is here. And then that becomes our BR. Now, that's on a very basic level. Obviously, there's more uh, stuff going on in the background and theoretically, you could just cut this all down in one line. But for the sake of this video and running on code that I do definitely know works, we'll just run with this guy. So we still see there's some errors here, but that's just because we haven't done our catch blocks yet. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Under here, because we've got these try statements, we also tune in to grab ourselves a while loop so we can actually figure out what we're looking for. Because at the moment, it's going to grab this website and doesn't know what to do with this website. So we need to tell it what to do with this website site now that it's got it. So we'll go in here and put a while loop in. So while and we'll go double open and we'll go line. So what we got here is our string line equals buffer reader or br dot read line. And then we can go over to here and we'll close an extra bracket and we'll go exclamation mark equals null. And I think we've got that brackets in the wrong place. So we'll just fix up our brackets right here. So we've got one open, one close, null, boom, we are good to go. So we can see here we've got two open brackets and two close brackets, makes sense there. Close that line off. So essentially what we're doing, uh, we're making ourselves a little, little while loop. So while it equals not null, we can go ahead and run this function. At the end of that, in fact, we don't want one of them, we want this guy. So we can actually put a function there. So if line, so we'll do an if statement here, if line, uh, contains, so we're using our contain statement, href, which is our links, I think it is in HTML, href, done. So, okay, what's happening in this line that we just wrote? Well, this if statement goes ahead and says if line, so it is if the data that is coming in contains href HTTP because we're looking for links specifically, it will go ahead and then print them out, but only trim it down to, well, the HTTP section. So without this particular function, and if we just went ahead and printed it out, it's just going to print everything on the page and it's going to go downhill really, really fast. So what we did is we said anything with href HTTP is what we want to focus on. Now, you may notice we had to do this little slash doodad guy because without it, if we put another quote here, we can see that it closes the href. So essentially what Java is doing is saying one open uh, set of quotes and then that's the whole function. It doesn't know that we want to have this guy open. So what you need is that slash. So it sees this whole thing as just one long quote, which is definitely really important. So again, while the input line equals this, we can go ahead and do look for anything with href HTTP. Now, if you want to look for a tags, if you want to look for header tags, really anything, all you need to do is replace HTTP and href really with anything else you want. So we may test this out later. We may not, but essentially this green area, replace it with whatever HTML element you want, and it will go ahead and search for that. Then it's pretty simple in this line here, basically goes ahead and prints out what it has found. And we again use the trim to make sure it only prints out what we want. Now at this point, it's actually coming together pretty well. We've got the functions written and it's actually probably going to work, but there is no catch section. So if there's an error here, the program doesn't know what to go ahead and do. And that is what we need to put in right now. So after this little brace down here and we'll close off another brace right here, we will write ourselves a catch function. So we go catch and we put this guy in and boom, we first noticed that there is now no more red line. Perfect, exactly what we want. So this is where we need to do ourselves some kind of like catch statements. So we'll go M-A-L format exception. So we use this guy and we call this M-U-E and then we can go ahead and write our function right here. So if we grab ourselves to the right location, 
we can go ahead and type in here mue.print stack trace that is yes that is correct so that is going to go ahead and do our first set of management and then under this guy we need to do another catch so we'll go catch once again in here we need to do our io exception so if you've done anything with the java's io util and those kind of things definitely we know we need to give ourselves an io exception so we go io exception use that and we'll call this guy ioe and we'll open up a brace and in here we'll go ioe once again and then we go uh, dot print stack trace boom simple like that and those are our two catch statements now just like all other file io and those kind of things we do need a finally statement to close off anything like that so we go finally and then in here we'll put ourselves another try and catch block because again if there's an error we need to know what to do with this error so try and then inside of our try actually we don't even have that yet so try And that's basically it. Our program will now work. So what we basically did in this finally section is finally much like try and catch is just another keyword to use, but finally will always run. So it'll try to do this. If not, it'll run to these catches, but it will always run the finally. So inside of this finally, we have a try saying that if IS, well, not null or rather, so if IS is not working, we can close that off, which is definitely important. Uh, and then we've also do got a catch if something does go wrong. So we've got tries, we've got catches, and then also to the finally, which again is very, very important. It's really useful. And if we go ahead and just go ahead and uh, put a finally in here, so system out, so we can actually show you how the finally works. Uh, we'll go here and go test uh, finally, finally, two L's test. So basically what this means is every time we run this code, we will always see finally test. Now, the last thing we need to do is hit run and we can see whether it works. So let that build up and go through. And once it loads the actual HTML page, depending on your internet speed, boom, we can see the links came through. And more importantly, we can see the finally test happen. So basically showing us that finally will always happen when you have your Java code here. But seeing we don't need that, we can pull that out we can run the code once again and boom it'll load up the internet again depending on your internet speed and it will show you all the different things right here which is really really cool so for example we can see here we've got ourselves a little statistic squarespace thingo which we can go ahead and actually click on and that will open up in another page for me it just opens up the cp model web page thing right there and we can go and click on things like this so that was just a link back to the cp model.com uh, homepage really really simple right there and if we wanted to change things up let's say for example we wanted to go to a different website so let's use Let's use Wikipedia's homepage for an example. So if we wanted to use Wikipedia, all we need to do is go in here, replace HTTPS www.cpmodder.com with HTTPS enwikipedia.com, blah, 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 blah. But it's always important that you put HTTPS. You do need to change the code quite a bit, I believe, to actually make it work with just HTTP. And if you want to use different formats and those kind of things, you will need to change the code. But for what we're doing here today, HTTPS will work with all of our code right here. So if we want to do Wikipedia, boom, we'll hit click once again and we'll let this guy load through and it'll pull through all the links on Wikipedia's page and we can see Wikipedia has a lot of different links and it'll even tell you uh, other stuff about it. So we can see the alt tags, we can see what the alt tags refer to, we can see the source of where it's located, so we can see where it is kind of there, we can see any formatting done to it. So it's actually a really powerful tool that we've written right here for debugging and working on uh, web pages and those types of things. So again, Basically, really simple piece of code with a lot of functionality. Now, if your program goes ahead and puts in this import Java doc flavor thing, you can just backspace that because it is not needed for what we're doing here. But all in all, it's as simple as that. We have a try, we have a catch, and we have a finally to run all the functions we want. So there we go. The program will be linked in that description box if you want to go ahead and download it. So there we go. That is it for the program. Once again, if you do just want to download this program straight away, it's linked down in the description box. You can go ahead and grab it there, along with a couple IDEs if you want to go ahead and pick them up from IntelliJ, which is what I use today. There's NetBeans down there, Eclipse, and all those other good things if you do want some other free options. But with that being said, if you have any suggestions, for future code videos let me know in that comment sections or if you do have a problem with your line of code you can uh, drop me a comment down there thanks all for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one